following what Tom just was talking about and the other colleagues here, my background is actually I've never really left this place. A half century ago, I was born right up the street at what was in Mount Park Hospital. But when you look at Pinellas County in the bigger picture of Florida history, the historiography is pretty bare. There's not a lot. 25 years ago, when this building didn't even exist, here I was studying Pinellas County history, learning about and really publishing about a quarter century ago, a place that hadn't really been given proper scholarly attention. Yes, those holes in my student idea from when we used to have a, a computer, a, an old barcode puncher machine to check out books. But years and years ago, built up a lot of resources and research that provided just not the educational background I was looking for, but also ways to build collections. This is actually when this building opened, when I was still a graduate student here. I left a little bit, and as I left, I continued my love of Pinellas County history and brought it to the public library community, and leaving the academic world was very beneficial in this way. I understand the, understood the importance of communicating in the vernacular, taking the academic research, all the conferences I went to, and focusing and broadening the audience. When I came back here, it gave me opportunities to start building significant collections with my peers here in the library, our excellent teaching faculty here at the university, and our folks in the community. 2012 was a great year. It was the centennial of Pinellas County. Very few people really knew about this. It gave us an opportunity, through some of my work at Heritage Village, to start a lecture series that broke down our county's history into 10 chapters that really brought together an understanding of how this place came together and the fact that Pinellas County is not just St. Petersburg, nor is it just Tarpon Springs, but it's an entire county with great historical interrelationships. Some of these things happen right up the road. Some recent research in Mirror Lake was wonderful as that library celebrated its 100th anniversary as a Carnegie building. Some of it goes outside of the Tampa Bay area and brings connections between Manatee County and Pinellas County and other places. And of course, some of it focuses not on just the traditional political history of the past, but also looking at environmental history and the larger social consequences. And as a baseball fan, we have to talk about spring training occasionally as well. Educational history is an area I've always had an interest in, whether it's the high school I attended, other schools in the county, or our very wonderful USFSP, where Sudsy and I were very involved with a wonderful five-part series here on the history. Libraries are another part of my life, and we have a couple of centennials this year in the Clearwater system and also in the Tarpon Springs Library, where I was brought back to places I used to use and actually worked at Tarpon for a while to talk about their history in a larger context. Whether we're looking at libraries as cultural heritage institutions or other cultural heritage institution. While Sudsy and I were working on the 50th of USFSP this year, I was single-handedly working on the 40th at Heritage Village and doing a series of lectures up there to connect those buildings with the stories of the pioneers of people and others involved there. Publication is important in the academic world. I've done some scholarly work, some academic publications, but what I really love is getting into the vernacular. Sometimes we don't look at photographic histories as being as relevant or as valuable, but they get the word out. And so they also do other great things. They help to raise resources. They also have to help to raise awareness. The fact that these are not separate and distinct communities. If you live in Madeira Beach, you go over the bridge to Seminole. And if you live in St. Petersburg, it's a great place to know about, but it's not the only place in Pinellas County to know about. So when we look at this, it's a combination of a number of things. Scholarship, research, the academic side, but the public side as well. Even with 24 hours notice, getting in front of Charlie Belcher on a Fox 13 show and talking about what Heritage Village is and why it's important. But then there's the other side. These are my grad students from a USF Tampa class in the School of Information. I'm not just talking about archival theory. They're going in and working with things. The Historical Society even put a scholarship on my name. And the cool thing is the winner this year wins $2,500. What's the focus? It's on public history and promotion awareness. Yes, Liz Southard is a grad of this campus. Her and I did a number of talks here at Ecker College and other places. And I've even taken some students out to UNLV and also to Mississippi, where we talked about archives, but a lot of the foundation was public history. Yes, I got through a lot of slides, and I have about 30 seconds left, which isn't enough time to tell you, except please, on Sunday, if you have nothing better to do, come up to Heritage Village, learn about Oldsmar, which celebrates its centennial on this next week. Thanks, guys.